Hello and welcome. In this problem, you'll be designing molecules that bind specifically to the glycan groups on the spike protein that is on the surface of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So, what is the spike protein? Most of you have seen these images of the SARS-CoV-2 virus and you see these proteins that stick out from the membrane of the coronavirus. It's the protein that gives it the name corona because it appears like a crown or corona around the virus. It's also the protein that first recognizes the host cell, that is our cells. There has been unprecedented structural biology efforts that have actually managed to find the crystal or cryo-EM structure of different parts of this protein. So we have the S1 and the S2 domain, and we already have the experimentally determined structures or positions of each of the protein parts or the residues of this protein. But what we also see is that this protein has many sugar groups, or glycan groups as they're called, attached to it. And even in the cryo-EM structure, we are able to maybe figure out one or two of these groups. But that's not the full story. Actually, these sugar groups or glycan groups are usually not seen in crystallography or cryo-EM. Mass spectroscopy methods can identify both the location of these glycan groups as well as the identity of these glycan groups. But what does it mean to have glycan groups? What you see in this figure is that you have the protein in blue and the glycan groups in red, which are embedded in this multicolored membrane. And you can see already, even before you come to the blue protein part, you have the red glycan groups that act as shields. So in fact, it can change the electrostatics and even the identity of the protein to which the glycan groups are bound. And of course, it can also alter the binding of the drugs. So for instance, if you design a small molecule drug that binds really well to some small part of the blue protein, if it can't even go past the glycan groups and approach that, what's the point? Now these glycan groups are actually extremely complicated and it's not just one or two different sugar groups that attach. It's a very complex mixture as I've shown in this table and we have all the different residues, many of the aspirogens, which are actually gly glycosylated. So knowing all this, what we want to do in this problem set is to target specifically these glycan groups. Now, how do I approach this problem? The traditional way is you can do docking or virtual screening, take a whole library of molecules and see whether they'll bind to the sugar groups. But the problem is that often most of our libraries are small molecules that are targeted to protein parts and very few have good binding to sugar groups. So it might be more important to actually look through literature and see what else binds to these sugar molecules and can I now define a smaller subset of these molecules that will bind the sugars. And we can also then try to identify features of sugar binding small molecules, do some machine learning on them to understand which are the better features to define these sugar binding molecules and perhaps use these to design new molecules. And of course, at the end, we will have to validate it. The best molecules that you all design, we'll try to experimentally validate it, synthesize these molecules, get the spike protein and do the experiments. But even before that, we have to prioritize of these many, many libraries of molecules that you'll be designing and identifying and repurposing, which are the ones we should prioritize for the experiments. For this, Please calculate the free energy of binding using some of the tools provided in the toolbox and these numbers will be used to actually prioritize many of these molecules. Thank you. Enjoy.